Hello, welcome to HM Reviews. And I just finished watching Jurassic World, the extended cut. And what did I think? Personally, I thought it was okay, all right. Still as entertaining as the theatrical release. It fixes many of the issues and many of the plot holes that the theatrical release had. Man, for the most part, it's a better experience than the theatrical cut. The extended cut, I mean. Uh, if you want to know what the plot is, I'm not going to summarize it because I did that in my review for the theatrical cut. So if you want to know what the story is, go look up, well, just watch my review of the theatrical cut. Link will be provided in the description. So, I'm not going to talk about the plot, because the plot is the same, and the characters are the same, and the motivations, and pretty much everything's the same. There are many changes to the story, not much, but there's enough changes, there's just to fix the machine, or in this case, the, uh, the dinosaur. So, there's enough to fix this, or to heal the dinosaur, but never mind, I'm going on a tangent, on a, I'm just rambling at this point, aren't I? So, let's talk about some of the extended, the, the I mean, the stuff in the extended cut. The stuff in the extended cut, the stuff they added. Like, the first scene is a prologue scene. It's a scene showing the beginnings of Earth. It shows the dinosaurs. And it's actually a really nice scene. And I'm glad they added it. If Disney ever did a version of that Rise of Spring segment from Fantasia or a live-action version of it, I would like to see it done like that. And another, what else we got? Oh, yeah, we get we got a, um, a scene at the opening, like, or after the extended cut, where a T-Rex attacks a, um, a, I think it's a drive-in movie theater. A, after we cut to after that scene and the story plays out very much the same and we get a couple more stuff with Owen and his rival being give me a moment a few moments later rain so Owen and Rain have this standoff, and they're on horses, and they're, and he's pretending to be part of what I think is a uh, safety dinosaur thing, you know, animal security. Let's call it dino security, and for, and he pretends to be that only for the real dino security to show up. This scene sort of sets up these two as rivals. Rain is a, you could say he's a second villain or a second antagonist. And boy, does he ever get a satisfying kill. He, like, he he gets like... His hands get spread out by both dinosaurs, and he gets killed that way. I think his... I, I forgot 
how he died, but it's a cool death. Check it out. I'll leave it in the link in the description below. And speaking of that, remember the uh, dinosaur scene? Uh, uh, you know, the dinosaur flea market, I believe it's it was. The dinosaur flea market. There's a scene that... You know the thing with the dog fights? Well, there's a dino fight. And one of the dinosaurs, one of them who looks like a dinosaur and a chicken, which is pretty accurate. And one is this little dinosaur. And you know how he gets out? How they fight each other? He just go, starts going around like a chicken, like he's like Twitter painting. And he did. And while. And while he's doing that, he pretty much mortal combats this dinosaur. No, I'm not joking. One in this fight, one of the dinosaurs gets mortal combat fatality. He gets decapitated. It, which is pretty damn awesome. Oh yeah, let's get back to uh, let's get back to the beginning. Uh, we have Maisie Lockwood, who's trying to keep a low profile. There's a scene with her in the store buying supplies, and I believe she buys this candy bar. And one of the la the front lady at the cashier asks her, why aren't you in school? And she basically says, I'm homeschooled. So, yeah, she's trying to keep a low profile. Eh, makes sense, given how everyone is pretty much after her. She has a target on her back. Anyways, I want to talk about the actress who plays Maisie Lockwood. Here's her name. Like, right here. Here's her name. Look it up. Her, this, I mean, I like this actress, and I hope she gets more roles so that she could be better associated with the movie-going public outside of the Jurassic World movies, because I think she's a good actress, and I think she deserves a lot better, and a lot better than she than the treatment she got with this movie. Like, this is a little girl. You're doing the same crap, internet. You're doing the same crap that you did with Jake Lloyd. Knock that crap off. Anyways, I think I want that rant, let that rant go on for a tiny a tad too long. So anyways, we also get a scene, you know, that, with the dinosaur, the big one, the one that, you know, 3C called, called, um, called, said he was like the Joker with the smile. So he's, well, he gets a couple of foreshadows, like, towards their fight, so it makes their fight a lot more meaningful. And going back to, that brings me back to Owen and Rain. The rivalry that these two show at the beginning of the movie shows their rivalry and makes his death a lot more, let's say, that fight that they have a lot more meaningful. And then we have the, um, what else? Uh, we, have the, we have a shot of the T-Rex where you get a close-up of his eye after the characters leave. And and it just, it's dark for a moment, then it goes white, and you see his yellow eye. Am I the only one who would find it funny if, if during that scene, they played the song, Running Up That Hill, and just played flashbacks from the uh, from the from the previous movies, am I the only one who would have found that funny? Hmm.
yeah, I'm kind of talking about all the cool stuff to tiptoe around the obvious. So, um, you know the locus from the orig from the theatrical version. Uh, the locus, yeah, they're in this movie. I assume that they were mutants in the like, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, like they went all secret of the ooze, and some of the DNA from the dinosaurs got into the got into the locus, and they mutated. But no, that's not what happened. They're just uh, prehistoric locusts who are bigger. And that brings me to a... Okay, let's get out of the way. They're prehistoric locusts. They don't try to hide the locusts. They don't try to... They don't pull a uh, Highlander 2, you know, the Highlander 2 director's cut where they try... To men remove a uh, mention of Zeiss. Well, they don't do that here, which is something they easily could have done. They could have just removed the locust, and I think that would have removed a lot of problems. So that so I got the elephant or the locust in the the giant locust in the room out of the way. Let's talk about a couple of the other extended scenes. We have a scene in where I believe his name is Owen, no, Grant. I think it's Grant from the first movie. Look, give me a minute. A few moments later. We have a couple of scenes with, uh, with Sam and Ellie Sadler, you know, Sam Neal and Ellie Sadler. We got a couple of scenes with them towards the beginning. We have a scene of El of Sam Neal being talked down to by a bunch of you know kids saying that why are you still fossilizing? There are real dinosaurs out there, and they pull out their phone and they put like a TikTok and they show a TikTok, I think an Instagram picture of a dinosaur. And, okay, that kind of gets a laugh, so I'll take it. And we get a couple more scenes with, you know, we get an extended scene of what they've been doing the past couple of years, both Sam Neill and Ellie Sadler. And it's nice to see. So, I, that, and... And that's pretty much all I can think of for now. So, something that's been running across my mind ever since I saw the film in the theater is how does it stack as its own film and how does it stack as a sequel and a final chapter? So, uh, and how does this cut do this film any does this cut do this film any justice i say for the most part this cut works it's i'm glad this cut exists if mainly for the fact that i feel like at one point in time colin trevorrow the director of this film and universal pretty much said to themselves let us try to give the fans something that they don't have to feel ashamed. Let's try to give the final chapter that they want. Let's give them the version of the movie that they wanted, at least what some of them wanted. And, for, and I do have to respect that. They could have easily just... Just said, let's just throw some things together. If some don't work, it don't work. Let's just throw crap at the wall, see what works, what does this put. And if it don't work, let's put in the film anyways. And we'll just laugh all our way to the bank. But, laugh. So, but they didn't do that. And I got to give Colin Trav Travero or Colin Trevorrow respect for that.
<laughs> he at least tried to give the fans and a uh, and speaking of that i've heard some people comparing this to rise of skywalker in terms of a finale and my response to that is this is not as bad as rise of skywalker now let me see if i could put it this way if you had to bonk me on the head Put me in a burlap sack and drag my ass to the living room and ask me, what film would I rather watch? Rise of Skywalker or Jurassic World Dominion? And I'd probably say Jurassic World Dominion because unlike Rise of Skywalker, which just felt like it went out of its way to just piss me or tick me the hell off. And and to me, it just, and to my, I'm guessing a lot of other Star Wars fans, it just felt like a big, fat middle finger, an insult to the, to the fan base. Ascent, Rise of Skywalker to me just felt like, okay, we saying, screw you. We got your money. That's two hours of your life you ain't never going to get back. At least with Jurassic World Dominion, it's, a, it's, like, it's like a roller coaster movie. If I could put it like that. You go on the roller and It's like a theme park movie, which you just go on the ride. And I don't mean that. I don't mean this movie being a theme park movie and a bad thing. It means you just watch the movie and you enjoy the ride. And as far as that goes, I got a lot of entertainment out of this movie. And I had a lot of fun action sequences. And there's cool characters like Kila Watts, I believe that's her name. That's, look, there's her name. Look it up. And, okay, she brings me to what I think I've been thinking about. This movie is good on its own. It's very entertaining as its own movie, but as a final film in a franchise that has been going on since, like, 1993, it kind of feels like it's lacking in a few areas. And I'm just going to say it. It sort of, kind of, sort of ish sucks as a final chapter in my opinion a final chapter should be a film that pay that pays homage to everything that happens before it should be a glorious celebration of what a franchise is and for the most part that's what this extended cut feels like for the most part but what it all, but what an ex, but what a final film should also not do the opposite it should not bring in new characters and shiny new lore just for the sake of it like i like the character kilowatts i think she's a fun character but her character could have easily been replaced with the character Ramsey, and it, cause she Ramsey could have just filled in her spot, and it just and it would have fit just Ramsey with the character Ramsey, and it, cause she Ramsey could have just filled in her spot, and it just and it would have fit just. Ramsey from the first film. And uh, as a final film, I. And the Locust thing, while it's cool for a maybe a different series, like a Sharknado kind of series. It would not fit for a, it doesn't fit into Jurassic Park, which the main focus is dinosaurs, which, yes, you get a lot of dinosaurs, 
and and you you get more dinosaurs than any of the all four or five of the movies combined but the but the dinosaurs are the focus are not the focus like they should be the threat i feel like the locust should have just been a macguffin a side thing for how the characters meet they don't need like but i guess that's just my opinion and, and at the end of the day i enjoyed this version of the film if you were to ask me what version of jurassic world dominion i would want to watch i just watch the extended cut it might be longer than the theatrical but hey at least at least at least tries to make sense unlike the theatrical version which yeah the theatrical version it's hilarious in my opinion but I have a feeling I'm never going to watch the theatrical version of this film again. So, at the end of the day, I'm giving this movie... I'm giving Jurassic World Dominion the extended cut an okay, an, a thumbs up for entertainment value and for respect for Colin Trevorrow... But unfortunately for the conclusion to a franchise, I'm going to have to give it a thumbs down.